Welcome to Red V TV, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2019 season, as we look ahead to the round 28 clash against the Huddersfield Giants at the Totally Wicked Stadium this Friday evening. Before we get on to previewing the match, um, anything to discuss this week? No, no, I don't think anything's happened. I've been quite busy at work, but pretty quiet. Yeah. Um, no, um, I think before we start, it'd be remiss not to to discuss Eamon's comments properly. Um, we did mention it. Um, in the instant fan reaction yep. on Friday evening. Um, since then, are we? Is it safe to say we're a little bit disappointed with the media reaction and the way it's been taken? Yeah, probably so. It seems a lot of um, journalists, tweeters, social media experts have kind of taken a narrative and and all run with it and not really read what Eamon had, had written down and kind of understood it. Really taken in the language to to quote Adrian Durham, read what's down, understand what's down. They've really just gone with the narrative and, and run with it all week. He really is the only man from Talks World worth mentioning. It certainly is. Um, yeah, for me, the media's gone with Eamon Manus's ref bashing. Yeah. And he's bashing Robert Hicks. He isn't. He has said he isn't. He isn't blaming Robert Hicks himself. No. He is blaming the position he was placed into. Yeah. If people actually read the statements and read the paragraphs properly... That is what he's saying. Now, I've seen some absolute crazy comments regarding Eamon and what he said. and I just wish people would read it. Every article I've read, I've come back, I think we've come back to each other and gone, completely missed the point. Yeah. Um, I think we, just a little bit of a reminder of what he actually did say. He said he was clearly making the point about the invidious position that Robert Hicks was placed in from the death threats. Um, and obviously... The interview that was done voluntarily 10 days before the final and then being placed into the position of refereeing a major showpiece event a few days later and obviously it was now six days before the final. In hindsight, should the club have said something in advance? Potentially so, but let's be honest, were any of us thinking of it? No, we were focused on our own team before the final. We were, we, let's be honest, we were all cock a hoop confident. Yeah, we? yeah, that's it. We were, and uh, no, uh, we all, we all, we all run with a narrative. Yeah. If Saints turn up and we play like we can, yeah. nobody can beat us. Well, that was proved wrong. Well, but, absolutely. But that was the narrative we all went with. Um, in hindsight, again, hindsight being a wonderful thing. But that's not Eamon's point. He's saying basically by placing him in that position, it is not about whether somebody is biased or not. And no, and I don't think. It, he has, Eamon has said Hicks was against us, Hicks was biased. He hasn't said that. No. He's talked about perception. Yeah. And a, and a referee has to be perceived to be completely above everything. And nobody can question, nobody can put them questions in. But because of what happened, that could be said. It's not saying he is. Yeah. He Listen, if that decision to award the no try against Morgan Olds had been at the other end of the field and it had been Jake Mamo touching down. You you could build a narrative to say, Warrington fans are saying, the try is not given because he's getting them back. It's not about whether he was or not. It's perception, and that was the point he was making. And he sh and Eamon's point was, he is saying the RFL should not pl have placed the referee in that difficult position. It was a no win situation. Exactly for, for Robert Hicks, and I think that is the point that. Everybody has yeah. missed in this he's, that's it. He, he, he's not saying Robert Hicks has cost us that final. He's saying he was in a no-win position if anything controversial pops up. And he's actually said he's hoping that lessons can be learned by the RFL so similar situations do not happen in the future. Yeah. Listen, is Eamon right? It's, I don't know. He's raised the questions and I think it's important that people actually listen to the point of view and the points that he's got before everybody jumps onto a narrative that isn't the case. Yeah. Listen, we know referees have got a difficult job. Do I listen, personally, I just think they were bad decisions at Wembley. Yeah. And did it cost us the game? It contributed because we were playing catch up, we were throwing the ball about, trying to play catch up and then more errors and we just compound our own errors. And listen, we contributed to it just as much. And Eamon was right, congratulations to Warrington. Four handling errors, played the game perfectly from their perspective. Probably deserve winners in the end. Yeah, I, I think I tweeted uh, from my personal account at the time that while I thought it was just a, a rank bag mistake not going up and having a look at it, I was quite pleased that Robert Hicks had actually made a decision on the field that, and also put the thing that 
the, the technology was there for him to use. So it, it, for me, at, at the time, I wasn't necessarily seething over it. I was quite balanced in my view and, and yeah. turning around and saying, it's a shame he's not gone up for it. You've got to applaud him for having the confidence in his own ability. But it's it's just left him, the RFL have, have left him in a bad position, haven't they? And and that's what and yeah, and left him exposed. And, yeah. it's, and instead of actually responding to Eamon's comments where he's talking about to listen to the RFL, this is how people can perceive things. You've put the referee in a bad position. They've just gone saying the meeting never happened just before the final. Okay, it didn't. But the the original point still remains. Yeah. Um, listen, I'll say now, Robert Six is more than welcome to referee any of our games going forward. Yeah, he's no better, no worse than pretty much any of the rest of the group of referees. Um, and I'm pretty sure the club would say the same. They would welcome him. It, I don't. I don't want to see a situation now where Robert Six doesn't referee us again this season. Yeah, that's it. He could get like, uh, but he could get a game like again, full away again. Potentially, are you not going to put it, if it, if he doesn't get put in charge? Is that because there is a perception that it it, it won't be treated properly? Yeah. See, there you go. So it, if, it, if if Raymond's point not to be proved now, you you put you know put him in charge. I don't I don't know. It's it swings it, around. Yeah, he could be put in charge of the the whole away game that we've got left. It could be next season before we see him again. Listen, if he's the best person for a playoff. Semi final or, or a grand final. Grand final. Put him in charge. Then he's the man in charge. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad that uh, on Twitter you haven't got dragged into um, arguments with some of the so-called experts. As I tell you every time, they're idiots. They'll drag you down to the level. They'll beat you with experience. And I'm glad that we haven't got drawn into any of that. Yeah, and I'd like to see people just look again at what was actually said and what the intent was. It was not ref bashing. Yeah. And I think everybody who's come out with comments since who has just constructed that narrative needs to have another look. Yeah. Um, right, that's covered. Done yes. Get in. Right. Two, Move on. Two changes to the squad. Lachlan Coote and Don Peru come back in for Jack Wellsby and Joseph Paolo. Um, so pretty much, I'll go, is Joseph Paolo rested or is he not in the 19? I'll go rest. I'll go rest. Or rest it on a bit of a knock. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go one of the two because I think he'd always be in and around for his experience in the NRL and, and playing yeah. in the World Cup for America and that. But I'm making the... For me, you don't go, yeah, he's done nothing wrong. Uh, no, but and people, people will say, well, he's done nothing right as well. I think he's... <laughs> they will, no, they will, though. That's, uh, listen, that's, that's the feedback we get on social media. That, that, that somebody had actually tweeted us saying that um, Paolo's got a week off just like last week then. But I think Paolo is one of those players who kind of goes under the radar. He's not a star NRL player who's going to get the ball break 50 metres, give it inside to his fullback who's supporting. He's solid. He is. He and is. that's the. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, but every team needs that. They do. It's, it's just whether he's, he's currently in form as much as, say, a Bentley. Yeah, and depending on how you want to construct your squad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Huddersfield then, they come this week, probably not out of the woods themselves, yeah? No, probably not. I, I think it's, I, I think to be honest, London are looking the most likely, aren't well, they? Think, unless London out. win both yeah. the corners, aren't they? Yeah, which is a shame, because I like giving London points down there, and really mixing up the bottom of the league. Um but I think I think Huddersfield will, will probably be all right just on the back of uh, Uda London plays it Hull KR and did they play Wake here if I made that up? I know they play Hull KR because uh, I'm dying for London to turn them over so I can just turn around and say why, why have Hull KR played a weakened team even if it's the full strength team? Um, yeah, you Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Sydney did us a preview at the start of the year. He's not getting away with it just because he's <laughs> no, never told you. No. Um, yeah, I think I think Huddersfield will, will be alright. There's rumours that Simon Wolford's been uh, linked to an NRL um, assistant coach's post. Oh, assistant. Yeah, yeah, it won't be a, a head coach's post, I'm afraid. Sorry, Simon. Not, um, not yet. But, yeah, the, Huddersfield are one of them teams that, on the day, can cause you problems. I'm just not entirely sure. And it could be a good team for Saints to play because if they turn up on one of the bad days... And we're looking to almost click a little bit into gear. This could be the right type of team to be playing. Yeah, I saw some odd comments last week saying, oh, we put in a sulky performance after Wembley. 
we give a team a duck egg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The defence was like phenomenal. We didn't click an attack, but we were all playing on the back of Wembley. Mm. But we were solid and we didn't play a full side. Now listen, if we're still playing like that in two or three weeks, then get the yeah, start be worried. worried. Yeah. But listen, that was a game on Friday. I think we said before kickoff. I, I know I said in my preview that we were getting a twelve point start on the coupon and not, and we all went wouldn't yeah. touch that. No. We knew what we were gonna get. We probably expected more points from us, but we were obviously expected cast to score a few yeah. as well. Um it was Old school rugby league, defensive yeah. battle, defense yeah. win, defense wins championships. As I said in um, in the instant fan reaction, it reminded me of ten years ago at uh, Bridge End when we were four 0 against the Celtic Crusaders as they were. Um, but the, going back to our squad, I to, and a couple of people to 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 a woman and man, people have replied to us when we've asked for your thoughts on the squad, and everybody said we go full strength now. Yeah. This is it, and and people want right. to see it. And you know what? The squad that he's named suggests that. But there's no reason not to, is there? Because you've got yeah. Huddersfield this week. Yeah. You've got Hull next week, which is a good test. Yeah. Uh, Hull obviously still pushing for the playoff spots, and then you've got a week off anyway. Mm. So everybody gets a week off. You've got a home semi final, which if you win, you get another week off. That's it, and we're at that stage of the season as well that you can't start worrying about injuries. If injuries happen, they happen. You've got to just go in full strength. Yeah. If you've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a knock or a little bit of a niggle or something like that, other teams will be playing with them. You've just got to get through the next month and a half, and then you can go in some bed. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's it. Everybody's in agreement that he goes full strength, and I can't see anything but that. He's, he's he, they put Tits have put a video out as well uh, today, saying that. Um, Nagama, Farge will play as well. Yeah. Um, Which tells you, yeah, Lomax back in the half to Farge, Coop will be at full back. Yeah. The side we expect. Yes. Essentially. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I like the fact that the club have put incentive in there as well. It's not just a nothing game, it's a win this and we're unbeaten in the regular season for the first time since 2002. Yeah. That is an incentive for the players to perform and win. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Next week, assuming we can win. The incentive, or Wigan or Warrington or any of them, 30, the incentive will be win this week and finish as record breakers, finishing with the highest winning margin in a regular season. Yeah. Since, I think, Wigan in 1986-87 with 15 points. Gareth Walker for the stat. Um, so there's incentives each week now. Yeah. And I like the fact we're building it up as a, as a, a game we need to win. And we do. Yeah. There's no... We don't want to be going into... The bigger games to come on the back of any more losses. No. Uh, we've lost four all year. We haven't lost South of Birmingham. Let's keep it that way. Agreed. So box off. Anything else? Um, Great Britain squad. Ah, yeah. End. Um, I think it... we've discussed this before, haven't we? Yeah. Lachlan Coote and Blake Austin. I, I agree. Justin Holbrook again said it probably shouldn't be grandparents. It should be direct, like your parents in yeah. the country that they were born and then you I'll be honest I'm not a fan of it of the grandparent rule or of the grandparent way. rule yeah. and I know it's in other sports but that doesn't make it right either well yeah I, I, that's it I, the thing with it is I see people may have cheered Ben Stokes in the cricket and then we'll turn around but he's been over his ears since he was a kid as well hasn't he yeah but you've got Ben Stokes you've got Joffrey Archer and people will cheer them but then they'll turn around and say, oh, we can't have them. They were born in a different country. Mm. Now, you've got to kind of know... The Aussies have been doing it. You look at the likes of Tony Carroll, who played for both New Zealand and Australia. My issue is, if Ben Stokes had been approached by New Zealand... Would he have gone and... Would he have gone them? playing for them? Possibly. We don't know. Yeah. Now, to offer a little bit of critical analysis to this debate... Tell I've done a degree at some point in my life. Um i seen the argument on Facebook and Twitter while we're on about it uh, that the club are being criticised for describing social media as an open sewer when they use it themselves. Yes, it is. Mm. I don't think anybody, would, surely nobody can disagree with that. When you see the the racist tweets that have been sent to the likes of Marcus Rashford, Paul Pogba, death threats that get sent out to referees, 
death threats that get sent out to us. Yeah. It's there. It doesn't mean you're automatically going to stop using that medium, which is the best. Essentially, it sounds awful. It's the best medium out there to reach the biggest amount of people. But unfortunately, you get every bit of riffraff in society who can send what they want, essentially, on most occasions, and get away with it. You can, you can send us a death threat from New Zealand... Whatever you want to. Zimbabwe, Switzerland, you can be anywhere in the Vatuif. world. It's a Vatuif. It's very hard to police because it's a global thing. So it is an open sewer. Water flows, flows through a sewer, but the turds come with it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, back to the argument. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I've seen the argument on Twitter um, as a bit of critical analysis about Lachlan Coote basically saying that he was proud to represent Scotland. He paid for it. Apparently, he paid for his own flights to get over to join the Scotland World Cup squad. He's played for Scotland. He was proud, apparently really proud, according to some of our, our Scottish uh, Saints followers when they've spoke to him. Really proud to follow his heritage. So do you know what? If that's the case, who are we to deny? Yeah. Well, that's it. Listen, the rules are the rules. We're sticking by them. If it's good enough for Aussies and the likes and New Zealand calling up South Sea Islanders, as Raymond French would call them, then... Listen, we can't really then, or we shouldn't argue when we're calling up yeah. the players, the best available Which makes players. me laugh, sorry, when the media in Australia picked up the story about British rugby league fans being unhappy at Lachlan Coote and Blake Austin being in the in, uh, Great Britain squad. When you look at some of the players Australia have included over the years who weren't born in Australia, yeah. it's a bit, I think they might have forgot a little bit there. But anyway, um, the only other question is, why wasn't Jackson Hastings in it? I don't know, that's a tough one, that. Had... Unless he wants to play for Australia. Yeah, unless he's, he's pretty much come out and said so. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Um, couple of odd decisions to be in there. Sh uh, Sean O'Loughlin. He's, been, uh, he's, a, he's a captain of England, that's why he's in there. Whether he makes, makes that close squad. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, I've seen a couple of people saying, why is Morgan Knowles in there? In the 29th? <laughs> the best 13 in the country at the minute yeah are people not watching our games he's fantastic he's a potential great Britain captain going forward so of course he's going to be in the 29 bizarre what some people think yeah um, Regan Grace unlucky to miss out uh, I think there's other wingers ahead of him to be fair at the minute I think he's, he's is, that, is Ash Handley a better winger than Regan Grace no well Ash Handley gets a lot of his stuff from Comrade Hurrell um, and so therefore He's made the squad and Grace hasn't. But I think I think Grace Grace's early season form and mid season, then I'd have picked him. I don't know. I'm not saying that he's playing badly at the minute, but I, I don't know. There's just little bits of his game like um a couple like well, Wembley final that didn't happen, where he knocks on over the line. Little bits of just little kind of touches in his game that he just needs to improve on. Little one percenters. A couple of years too soon. Yeah, he's still a young lad. He's got plenty of time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we've about set the world to rights. Yeah. Two notices that we've had through from Community Saints um, who've emailed us. St. Helens Colour Run 2019 is happening on Sunday the 15th of September, 9am start at the Totally Wicked Stadium. Um, get onto Community Saints on Twitter. We'll retweet it as well. Uh, if you fancy doing that, it's 4K, run, walk, zumba your way around, according I'll to walk. the... Are you going to zumba it? No. Um, I'll have to walk. Oh, I've got ankles, yeah. ankles like yours. And the other one... <laughs> they're not that bad. And the other one is the Saints Women Saints Women Tourist Fundraising Night uh, on Saturday the 21st of September 2019 at the Totally Wicked Stadium. It's a quiz night hosted by Saints and England International Stars Jody Cunningham and Ebony Rudge. Pie and peach supper, raffles, music, auctions and much more. Tickets are tenner, fiver for kids. And that's really because when the women go out and play for England, obviously they're not professionals. It comes at a cost. It comes at a cost. And, and a lot of these uh, women who are playing for, well, the club and the country, yeah. are going to take unpaid leave from work. Exactly. Where and this is to kind of help them out yeah. in that regard. Just as, well, just as we are fundraisers for... Um, the Australian tours yeah. that send the youth on. Um, hopefully, plenty of our fans will get behind it because let's be honest, we've got Saints players representing the country yeah. um, at financial hardship and sacrifice to themselves. So, yeah. 
Hopefully plenty will get behind it. I've just had a look up on YouTube. We have 1,493 followers. If you want to see Kev save his hair, we need seven more. Come on, he hasn't got that much to begin with. Don't be tight. I know, to be fair, it should be you shaving that helmet off the hook. Growing that. My luscious locks. Look like Fellini at yeah. the end of the week. Right. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Seven more, please. And we will catch you on Friday evening for an instant fan reaction after, hopefully, the 14th straight home win of the season. Catch you soon.